Hi, I'm Amy. I'm Laura. And we are Two Paper Girls. We're back with our October wrap up. Can't really believe where October's going. It's Halloween in. Actually, it's like Halloween in a week. We're filming this kind of early, but we're going out for Halloween at the weekend and we're busy, so we're filming this a tad early. But anyway, we're going to show you the books that we have read this month. We're going to start off with just all our university books because this month has been pretty good for reading. We do a module called Shakespeare on the screen or screen Shakespeare's, whatever you wish. And we're reading all of the Shakespeare plays, well, not all of them, but some of them. And we both have read different ones because I haven't bothered to read Richard III and we both haven't bothered to read King Lear yet, but we may do. Um, so the first one I read was Othello and I haven't really got much to say about these because... You know, that's not for Shakespeare Shakespeare's, that's, <laughs> that's to the lighthouse, that's for the module. And also Julius Caesar, and it was alright, I guess. I mean, Othello is definitely my favourite out of Julius Caesar and Othello. Um, <laughs> but to the lighthouse one of my favourite classics of all time. And it's been a good reading month for classics, I feel like. Mm. It's been nice to read uni books. We feel very on top of things at the minute, so it's nice. I feel like I've read very much this month and I kind of haven't. I've basically just read three plays for that module and a bit more of On the Other Side by Carrie. Hope Fletcher, I'll get into that a bit later. Um, but these are quite hefty, like they're pretty big plays. Richard III and Othello are two of the biggest and longest that he ever wrote, apart from like Hamlet and I think King Lear, but King Lear doesn't look as long as these. Um, so the first one I read was Richard III by... <laughs> William Shakespeare. <laughs> what a shock. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Amy wasn't a massive fan of this one, like she said, she didn't bother to read this one. But I actually really liked it. I'm not sure why. I just thought he was a really cool villain. I really liked the plot. Um, this is possibly one I might write my coursework on because I just, I enjoyed it the most out of all the ones that we read. And then I also read Othello, like Amy. I didn't like this one as much as Amy did. I don't know why. I just, I think I just really enjoyed Richard III, so it seemed like not as good of a tragedy as... Richard III and Hamlet and Macbeth and other ones and there's a lot of hype around Othello being like one of the big favourites and it just didn't really live up to my expectations. I don't know what I expected but I didn't know anything about the character of like Iago who manipulates Mac um, Macbeth, <laughs> who manipulates Othello and he was a cool character but it was kind of like, wasn't what I expected basically which kind of disappointed me but it was very good anyway. I gave Richard III four stars and I gave Othello three stars. And then the last one that we both read was Julius Caesar. Um, I only gave this two stars. I really wasn't a big fan. Uh, I thought I'd really enjoy this, but it, he dies really quickly and he doesn't even talk. Like, it's not about Julius Caesar, which was a surprise. It's mostly about his mate Brutus, who stabs him a lot. Um, <laughs> and I just didn't really like it. The first two acts were okay, but after that, I dragged on so badly. Because Julius Caesar was dead, everyone was just talking. And we had to watch an adaptation of it, and we were like, no, Shakespeare is just people talking, but like, all they're doing is talking, it was just, it's a very slow one despite the fact it's really short and I just wouldn't really recommend this one very much, I only, I only gave it two stars, didn't really like it. The first bum book I finished in October was Before I Go to Sleep, this was so good, I really enjoyed it, it was just thrillery and just really gripping, like I wasn't expecting it, thrillers aren't really my thing, I don't read many of them, but I really enjoyed it, I think I gave it four stars because it did dip a little bit in the middle mm. for me, I was just a bit like... Just tell him, just tell the husband so we can just <laughs> yeah. skip like 100 pages of this. But overall, I really enjoyed it. The twist was amazing. I did not see that coming and that's pretty unusual. It caught Laura out as well. She always guesses it. Always, always guesses the twist. So. No, I, I never guess it. And I was just like, wow, that was so far out of my, <laughs> of my guesses. But I want to watch the film now because apparently it's got Colin Firth in it. So that sounds really good. And the last thing I failed to finish once again this month was On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. I mentioned this in my September wrap-up. Um, and I basically just read about 50 or 60 more pages of it. Um, I'm really enjoying it though. I was tempted to put it down because I thought, you know, it's slumping me. It's not that it's bad. I just need to like read it when I actually have time to read and not when I'm busy. But then I read a bit more and now I'm really into it again. And I do think I'll actually finish this before the end of October because we are filming this about four days early. So um, yeah, I do think I'll probably finish it tonight. I've got less than 100 pages left and it's really, really good. I think it's gonna be a five star read. So this is like a pre-review, unless the ending's awful, it's gonna be five stars because I think it's great. And I feel like I'm coming out of my reading slump of the past couple of months. So I'm really excited to get finished this finally. And the last thing I finished in October was The Rose and the Dagger. I actually enjoyed this more than the first one, um, but still it was just missing something. I don't know whether it's because the books I'm reading at the minute have a similar setup of 
feminine lead with two love interests. She starts loving mm. the first one and then she moves on to the second one. And the first one's always evil and then turns out to be her new husband. <laughs> and um, it just wasn't written as well as Court of Mr. Fury. <laughs> um, so it's kind of dipped in my mind now I'm reading that. Um, but it's so good. I mean, I think the main character, I've forgotten her already, Charizard. Um, yeah, she she's great. I really like her, but she just annoys me a little bit. But she's got a temper, which I like, because mm. I have one. Um, <laughs> and I was just a bit like, I like the story and I like the plot, but it didn't just get me as much as the rest of the books. So I think I gave it like three and a half stars. It's almost a four, but not quite. Um, but it was a really nice duology. So that's it for our October wrap up. I feel like this has been very speedy because you guys don't really care about Shakespeare. Like you might, but even if you do care, you know the plot of Richard the Third. So we're not going to go into mass detail. Hopefully next month we'll have more fun books because Screen Shakespeare's we just have to read King Lear left, and then that's it. Kind kind of it for uni reading. Um, in terms of big things that take lots of time, we we have to read lots of little stuff. But we won't mention that. And we've really enjoyed the fun books that we've been reading. Like Laura loves you on the other side. Okay. And I've, lo I've loved the books I'm reading. And it's just all the way up from here until Christmas mm -hmm. because we're going to start getting the Christmas books <sighs> rolling in. And we're going to start getting festive on the channel early. I'm actually wearing a Christmas jumper right now. But <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> we are so excited for Christmas. We hope you are too. You're probably like, shut up guys, it hasn't even been Halloween yet. Anyway, have mm -hmm. a good Halloween and we will see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.